first movie, Jeepers Creepers 1, open face skin that was unused and obviously run from the first movie when we were in production because the color of the foam is raw colored. Everything we did for the second movie was run in gray foam. So this is definitely a first movie run piece. How it got out into the public, I will never know. But this is the condition before we start the restoration and final display construction using this. Um, obviously it's sitting on a bust of Jonathan Breck right now, but when we put it together, it's going to be put onto this head, which now has eyes and first movie teeth in it, and you've already seen the processes involved on getting all that together. Um, there's your signed base that you sent to us, and I believe you sent it with Jonathan Breck signature already, so I had Victor sign it and then I signed it as well. So we will end up doing a mount similar to this on our practice base onto that so that this head with that skin will be on that thing and we'll put the feet on it too so that it'll be elevated off the uh, tabletop or display top or whatever and that allows for the hardware that attaches all of that to come through these are the parts that the skin needs to be completed so we laid them out here and these ones that are pre-painted are actually from the original production they just weren't used so you're going to get original production parts mounted to this as well as second the this is from the second movie run obviously because it's gray and then these may have been first movie run because they're not pigmented but just never painted or used so uh the longer ones long one goes here long one goes there on each side so the top and the bottom get the long ones the medium sized ones go in the middle and the medium sized ones have the little talon that needs to get added to that the lower one is all that's in the sculpture so all they get are, are the, the claws on the end and then these guys laid out here are the cheek there's eight cheek uh, horns or spines that go there so the foam is in decent condition for being 22 years old um, where it's really dark colored here it's it is rotted this is all crumbly so we may we definitely will be doing some reconstruction for those areas where it's too it's just like dried bread and you can even see some of the dander just from breathing on it it's it's, it's shedding all that so that'll all get reconstructed uh, saving as much of the original stuff as we can there's a big hollow in the back butt cheek here where it was obvious why we didn't use this foam run because it was a bad foam run and it collapsed under inside so there even though this the outside skinned the inside collapsed and it's hollow so we'll be filling all that in to uh, make it help it keep its shape afterwards but other than that uh, it's all pretty well still in good shape the spines will have an armature wire running through them so they the weight of these things won't be affecting the, the rubber at all. It'll actually be running through the spine, through a channel that will put inside these stems and then embedding them into the skull. So all of that will be self self supported and won't be putting any stress on the, uh, the skin at all. And uh, so that's pretty much the plan. Now that this is all engineered and built and ready to go, it's just a matter of transferring this permanently to the head, attaching everything, doing all the cosmetic repairs, and then painting it to look like it did in the movie.
8, so let me uh, explain what's going on here. We've uh, replaced the upper lip and nose area because the quality of the foam had just deteriorated so much. This is the original nose, and there's, there, it would have looked horrible, and there would have been so much rebuilding anyway. So this skin is actually a skin that we ran for Jeepers Creepers 2, still out of the same original Jeepers Creepers 1 mold. So you're getting unused skins from both films. And again, your original skin here from the first movie was a collapsed foam run. So you had, basically, you have a skin on the outside, you have a skin on the inside, and then everything in the, in the middle turned into cottage cheese and collapsed or turned into a very dense rubber. And you can see up here now, this is like solid rubber, whereas normally it would be uh, it would be foam latex. But that's due to the collapse because the foam wasn't gelled right. We've cut away the sculpted membrane areas between the, the tendrils so that we can put in a, uh, a vinyl membrane like we did in the film and what that's made out of is a silk organza that's been coated with a vinyl uh, rubber so it's translucent transparent and it looks like a membrane so that's same technique we used in the film so we'll be doing that to finish all of this we cut the back of the head off uh for several reasons one so that we can place put the placement of all the armature wire that's holding the the tendrils in place but also so that we could get in and hollow out or we took out the the inner skin and so now you see where all the collapsed foam the hard dense foam is so we have now made a polyurethane foam insert to bring that up to what it would have been if it had been a foam latex skin so then all of this will get joined together now but again too there are areas where the the foam is so old it's disintegrating and because it was a poor quality run to begin with it had integrity problems anyway so what we've done in the areas where we are missing areas we ran another skin so this is brand new foam of the back of the head and we'll splice in the missing areas you can see when we've already blocked out there for that area and then we'll do the same for this small area down in here so uh, that'll complete that part of it the um, areas that you see here in the dark patching material is exactly that they're patching patches that we've started there's several passes that need to be made but this is to both repair or replace areas that are completely missing on the skin and reinforce them as well. These little flaps here, once we're done with all of the, the filling, patching, these will get honed out and put into the actual place where they belong. The lip, the lower lip, still needs to be attached properly, but um, so all of this will get blended and patched all of, all of the areas that are still needing it we still need to drill a hole down in the top of the skull so we can get these upper tendrils in so let me get that on camera and get it in focus I unfortunately can't go any lower with this because there's a, a wire on it so if we back up a bit I'll show you that this goes here and another one goes on the other side for the top of the head as far as the facial uh, things, all the wire, armature wires are in place. So this will get uh, its claw down there. And the medium-sized claw goes here. And then the two larger claws on each side mount in these areas here. And then once it's all painted and everything, the, the last bits go along the, the ridge of the cheek here. So we got these guys here, and there's two bags of these waiting for it. So my original estimate of how long it was going to take to finish this up was way off because it's a ton of work to make this thing livable.